up, everyone? My name is Dion Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from the finals of the Space Jam Rome Tournament. My co-host for this round is... Darren Granger. That's right. Super excited to be here with everybody. Uh, thank you to everybody who participated in our first ever European uh, event uh, that's online. This has been Premier level X-Wing, and here we have two Premier level players in the final. Um, I mean, this shows, I'm going to tell you, like, looking at the at the fields, we have some really great players uh, that participated in here. And looking at the final, you know, you're seeing the, the same players who were great on the table doing great in this digital format because X-Wing is still... X-Wing. Now, we're going to get uh, Timo's um, points reset on the left-hand side here in a second, but sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to uh, talk about participating in our Choose Your Champion uh, betting poll. All right, when you watch Gold Squadron Podcast, you gain a number of points depending on how long you've been watching. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about that and how this works. So uh, for every 20 minutes that you watch, you get five points. If you're active, you get 10. So that's double points for that means like talking in the chat. If you follow, you get a bonus 20 points. You, you Every time you sub, you get 100 points. Every time you gift a sub, you get uh, 100 points as well. So there's those of you guys who've been gifting some subs, you guys get some that way. Uh, there's also some extra uh, put in if you like to do donations. Now, uh, again, you can use those points in our Choose Your Champion poll. Super easy. You can see the instructions on the bottom right-hand side. All you got to do is uh, type exclamation point bet. You type one or two. So one is a player on the left, player one. Two is a player on the right, player two. And then you put a space and how many points. I gave a couple of examples there. I'm challenging everybody here to the all-in challenge. I want everybody who wants to participate, okay, all-in challenge to bet it all. All of it right now in the final. This is going to be a great game. Uh, let's go ahead and break down these matchups and talk a little bit about these awesome European players. So, on the uh, left-hand side there, we have Timo Raab. So, Timo is the current UK System Open champion. Um, in that event, he flew Boba Fett, Koshka Frost. Uh, in this event, he switched out Koshka, made a few changes to, uh, to Boba Fett, and he's gone with Dengar. Now, one of the interesting things here is, uh, when you look at this, is he's got Boba Fett there with uh, Fearless, Jamming Beam, because it's free, uh, more proton bombs, contraband cybernetics, hull upgrade, slave one. Really, really good toolbox uh, thing there on Boba Fett. Um, slave one, as we've seen throughout uh, the recent competitions, is is just money. You just staple that to Boba Fett first and foremost. And then uh, we've got, uh, as his wingman for this game, is Dengar. Now, Dengar's a ship that doesn't see a lot of play, mainly because of his points and his ship ability isn't great. And also the dial on the ship isn't great, but with the recent changes with the uh, the points and with giving them a cannon slot, they are seeing a little bit of resurgence. Uh, Dengar not so much. Normally it's Nomlom and the, uh, the the generics, but here we've got Dengar with marksmanship, proton torpedoes, auto blasters, L337, Han Solo, and contraband cybernetics. Now, what's interesting to note there is he's not gone for the uh, the punishing one title, which I think is a great great move on his behalf because it, it's a bit of a trap and you also lose your crew slot what he's getting out of that is he's got Han Solo as his gunner slot which is before you engage him we perform a red focused action so what that means is his usual action will probably be to take a target lock when he's out of range 3 because he's second player he will have full board information that's the last ship to move so he can take his target lock before he engages he can then take a focus and be stressed but it gives him a double modded proton torpedo shot. And what these uh, Imperial Aces don't want to see, especially Whisper, is a four dice shot coming down uh, down range at it. Um, but he's also got L337 on there. Now L337's got two sides to that card. Again, it's not one that we see very often because I'm not sure at the moment whether it's hyperspace legal or not, but that's by the wayside. Um, what L337 says on its uh, face up side is when, when it's deployed is, when you defend, you may flip this card. If you do, the attacker must re-roll all attack dice. So because the defender modifies first, 
if say for example he gets three or four hits on him from uh from say darth vader or from um whisper being at range one he can flip that card and make the attacker re-roll all of their dice um but the second part that comes in here is uh l337's uh, programming and what that means is if you're not shielded you decrease the difficulty of your bank maneuvers so what that means is later in the game dengar all of a sudden becomes much more maneuverable because it opens up the uh the moves to the right with uh, having blue banks um really really interesting list build choices there and the other little combinations that is worth mentioning is he's got marksmanship on uh, dengar which means that if you're in his uh bullseye when he shoots he gets to change one of those dice to a crit the other upgrade that's on there is the auto blaster cannon which means if he's out of your arc when he shoots at you so if he's outside of your firing arc he gets to uh, basically you cannot cancel those crit results so it's a way of basically putting on uncancelable damage into uh, those aces there so really really good kind of combination of upgrade cards uh, reminiscent of what we'd see normally in in kind of uh, first edition with uh, two ships with upgrades that complement each other very very well and then on the right hand side we've got ollie pocknell who is the current world champion and this is the list that he used in the world championship we've seen it play over a couple of t games over the last uh, two days uh, managed to redeem himself in the uh, the last game that we saw him because he uh, he did lose uh, in the Swiss, but he's obviously uh, made up for those uh, those mistakes there and uh, made it all the way to the final. So we've got the Grand Inquisitor with with no upgrades. We've got Darth Vader with uh, passive sensors and afterburners, and we've got Whisper with passive sensors and fifth brothers. So really, really trim down uh, three Imperial Ace lists there. But as we've seen him do time and time again. He makes uh, full use out of the uh, all of his list and cycling them through and things like that. So this is going to be a really, really interesting final, and it just shows that having uh, two players of great, great skill on the table actually shifting to an entirely different medium and, and playing online as well. And it, it kind of does settle those arguments of um, is it the list or is it player skill? Absolutely here, it's all about player skill. We've got two of the, probably the best players in Europe, arguably the world right now, playing on a computer game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, thank you to everybody who is participating in the All-In Challenge. Again, the instructions for how to bet your GSP points are on the screen. As for how you can redeem them, there are some online, some on-screen animations that you guys can trigger. Right now, we only have two of them out because it is in beta. But the plan is to have 20 to 30 uh, different ones at different price points that you guys can trigger on the screen. Uh, some will carry heavier prestige than others. Uh, just some fun stuff there. I'm going to be closing the betting as soon as they're done with dials for this round. So uh, let's go ahead and get the boats in. We have 120 bets right now placed on the game. Check your points by typing exclamation point points and then go all in. All in challenge. Now I guess you don't have to go all in if you don't want to, but what's the fun in that let's go yeah to be fair we here at gold squadron prefer it when you go all in that's right all right so right now uh Darren, looking at the positioning right now, so it seems like Timo uh, kind of also taking that aggressive style, taking away some of the lanes for the Imperial Aces. You can see that Whisper has uh, only two of the three decloak lanes open. I mean, we're probably getting engagement next turn, right? Uh, it's highly likely. I mean, where Dengar is at the moment, there's a nice three bank opened up there. So he can three bank in. Uh, and then barrel roll either to the the left or the right, uh, depending on where his targets go to. Now, I think probably what we're going to see here from Ollie is a cautious decloak to the right with Phantom towards the uh, towards the right hand side of the screen, towards the bottom bit of the map for, from his perspective there, um, just to get that distance. Um, I think it would be super aggressive if he was to go forwards because it puts him at too much of a risk for being closed by uh, Boba Fett. I think from the Inquisitor's point of view, we're probably going to see um, either a hard one, hard two, hard three. He's going to kind of sit around there and then maybe something cautious just from uh, from uh, Darth Vader with a one bank. I, I do think that we're going to see uh, Dengar potentially come in uh, quite fast and aggressive in this point. Um, and Boba Fett maybe uh, just taking it slow. But um, who knows? 
I've not seen Timo play with this list um, other than the uh, the tail end of uh, of last turn. So there we've got the decloak from Whisper, as I say, going towards the uh, the right of the screen. Makes sense. Um, you don't want to overexpose yourself. You don't want to kind of overstretch and leave it out um, just to face down uh, Boba Fett there. So, and there's the uh, the hard two as I was talking about from the Inquisitor. Probably just takes the evade, uh, keeps himself uh, safe there. Yep, yeah. uh, taking a focus. And then there's the uh, the hard one there from uh, from Whisper. So do we see the hard one from Boba Fett here? I mean, maybe. We'll find out. Just keeps its options open. Now, Vader probably is going to be turning uh, into the middle as well. Probably a bank maneuver. Just kind of set up the box. Like, listen, scum folk. All right, there it is. So, yeah, there's the uh, there's the hard one. Um, Boost is going to be really close to getting him to range one or not. Yeah, probably a and, bank and boost to the right. If he's trying uh, to get into whisper to face. A bank boost one to the right doesn't get you to whisper. It's more of a, do you take the straight boost towards the Inquisitor or the one bank towards the Inquisitor to get the range one? But then you're opening up your entire flank to uh, to whisper and to Vader. Um, you could just sit back there and just, yep, yeah, there we go. Just take the focus. Now, you don't get the rerolls there, but you do get the range bonus, and you're potentially going to limit Vader's shots, because if Vader's only done a one or a two bank, yep, there's the one bank there from Vader. So it might be that he's just out of range there for his target lock, so he might have saved himself some incoming shots. This is going to be a game of uh, positioning to begin with. Absolutely. We're probably going to see that. Yep, so there's the two bank from Dengar. It is blue, so it does clear it. And then he's probably going to try and take try and take a target lock. Yeah, me... <laughs> You have you have all the information. If you don't have anything in range, you don't get any torpedoes off. But um, you get to beat the threat next turn. And ooh, you yeah, just okay. got Vader. Yeah, there he and has just got Vader there. Is and it's probably obstructed. It's close. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it actually might. That might be clear, Dar uh, Darren. That might be clear. That might be a proton torpedo into Vader. Yeah, and that's one of the things he's got to watch out for because, as I was saying, the combination here of having the double modded shot, it's something that we used to know and be fearful of in uh, first edition, but the uh, the torpedo carrying uh, gunboats in uh, second edition. So here we've got Vader. Now, Vader here has the can... option to barrel roll away after yeah, the passive absolutely. sensors. Absolutely. So this is the thing with uh, Ollie going first. Here we go. So he's taking the uh, target log. We're probably going to see him barrel roll away yep. and then probably take the focus as well. Yeah, we saw him flip uh, two force. Yeah, so he will have uh, passive censored, used passive sensors, trigger off that to do the barrel roll, and trigger off that to do the uh, the focus with uh, with Vader. Uh, makes perfect sense, and it, it just takes Dengar's shot away, which is a real, real advantage there for uh, for Ollie being uh, first player. All right, here we go. Okay, so here Vader's going to spend the target lock. And, and you probably just spend a force. Hit it, crit on Boba Fett. No rerolls for Boba. Does have a focus though. And Boba's going to be taking two shields at least off the bat. Does spend the focus though. Uh, does he spend the focus or the force? Oh, you're right. Sorry, I forgot about the force. Yeah. He likes to keep yeah, it on but, the uh, on the table Vader, there. And Vader spent the. Uh, but he spent the focus there, which is probably the right move because it leaves him with uh, two force for next round. Because um, chances are Boba Fett's not going to take the shot at Vader. I think he's going after the Grand Inquisitor. So there we go. Two hits from uh, from Boba Fett. I uh, know he's going into Whisper. And then Whisper there. You probably spend the... Uh... Oh no, sorry. The, the uh, This should be the Grand Inquisitor firing first. Yep. Grand Inquisitor yeah, does do a damage there. Three yep. shields down on Boba Fett. Yep, and then we've got uh, Whisper. Uh, obviously, the passive sensor triggering uh, three dice into Boba Fett. We've Dang got it. Hit, uh, focus result and uh, a rogue die. Ah, uh, hold on.
Sorry, guys. Okay, so you can roll it on the table for now. So he's going to spend the target lock and re-roll the, uh, the blank. Okay, probably spends fifth brother for the uh, for the crit. Thinking about it. Okay, yeah, he did spend fifth brother for the crit. And Boba Fett rolls uh, two blanks. Uh, so Whisper there gets the uh, gets the evade, and then uh, Boba Fett takes a crit, and that is a damage sensor array. Uh, that's uh, it's not so bad for Boba Fett, but it does limit him from being able to uh, to disengage with a, a, a boost action. So Boba Fett's going to shoot back now. He's got options. Uh, he's got all three Imperial ships that he can take a shot at. But uh, it looks like he's going into the Inquisitor. And two hits. And the Inquisitor losing a shield there. Because Ollie opting to take the, uh, the focus rather than the evade. It, uh, it's uh, cost him a shield. But no point on the board yet. But from this position, you can't really argue that Ollie's in the uh, the more commanding place. Whisper right now has got the easy option of uh, decloaking to the uh, to the left and uh, then just kind of banking back in and uh, staying out of the fight, but still being able to bring those guns to bear. And Dengar's got a problem with uh, with that rock that's in front of him. Yeah, he'll have the option to probably one bank to the left. I think he'd be okay, but the question is whether or not he'll be able to catch anything at that point. Now, one of the things I find with Boba Fett is that Boba Fett has a really good mid and end game. So even though this opening engagement, like you said, uh, was not great for Boba, having the ability to uh, to use that Slave 1 title, you can get that damage sensor array repaired uh, as need be. And just try to try to use the tools that you have with Boba Fett to carry you through the game. Yeah, I think the uh, thing to be careful of right now is um, is uh, Boba Fett being uh, aboard. Um, I think it's safe to say that Ollie's probably going to decloak uh, Whisper uh, to Whisper's left, which is towards the screen, um, and then turn back in to try and keep. Uh, um, and Boba Fett's going to have a hard time trying to catch. Now, Dengar here, one of the options that you've got is just to do a three bank into that uh, that scrum. That um, should clear the rock and uh, should leave you safe. Uh, but it is quite close. Got some strong opinions in the chat. <laughs> Always. It's, Always. What do you guys think? Yes, opinions. yes or no? The one, the the one bank clips the rock. Yes or no? Quickly. Uh, I think the one bank from Dengar lands on that rock. I would even go as far as to say Batteries running out on my music. <laughs> I like some weird stuff. Uh, 
All righty, guys. Just want to remind you guys that Boba Fett does have a hole upgrade. That's why he's still at six hole. So he took the one crit. So he went from seven to six. So not quite uh, half points yet. Oh, uh, yeah, one away. One away from half points. Now, I mean, here, Boba's got some options. He could just dial in a hard one, see where the Inquisitor and where Whisper goes. And if he needs to, he could just turn up uh, towards that gas cloud, fix his uh, damage sensor array, still have shots, uh, and potentially uh, have range one from the uh, the Inquisitor. It, it's a tough position, especially taking that damage sensor array to stop him being able to boost this turn. He's really got to be careful with where he, where he goes. Um, it's Dengar, the, the one that's giving me the trouble. So here we've got the decloak from Whisper. There we go, towards the uh, the bottom of the screen there. It makes sense. Um, keeps her out of the way. Um, probably just see a, a, a one bank or a, a hard turn in. Um, there we go, there's the hard one. Um, keeps a gun relevant. Has the range. Ooh, and a, a rather fast move there from uh, from the Inquisitor, and that's that's horrible if Dengar has done that uh, one bank maneuver or uh, a bank maneuver in that direction. All right, Boba Fett getting in the grill, facing down yeah, some Whisper. The question is here, do you even bother about your damage center rate? Do you just take the focus? I mean, you get the re-rolls anyway, at least one. Yeah. No, you have two. Sorry, you have uh, the Inquisitor there right now. Yeah, so you've got the Inquisitor. You've got... Um, You've got more, so yeah. Is that that wasn't a bump? No, Vader fit there with the one one straight. Let's check those nubs. Nubs are clean, Bob. I always like a clean nub. Um. So yeah, I, I guess it all comes down to now. Where where did Dengar go? So Vader can put some serious hurt into Boba Fett here. Let's see. Looks like we're waiting for Vader's actions. So Boba yeah, has got to be careful on force. Boba does have three rerolls total right now. Yeah, that's important to uh, to note. There, we saw one flip. Yeah. And target lock focus and YOLO over the rock. <laughs> Look at that. That is a bad place for Vader. Vader is sad. You know, he already set up the target lock last turn, and Dengar is going to ensure that he yep. gets his. You know, the great thing there is zero consequences. He still gets his focus from the. From uh, Han Gunner. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Gunner. Fully modified range one shot. Oh, but wait a second. Does he have a... Does he have a what? Oh, he has auto blasters. Yes. He's got auto blaster yeah, cannon. So okay, think, that's why yeah. I, was, I was like, wait a second. Yeah. All right, so this is... So this is Vader into Boba Fett. Boba, yep. Changes one so hit to a crit. Change a crit. You spend the target lock uh, to reroll those because he's still got that from last turn. And Ooh. he's staying aggressive. He's going to spend it all. Spending it all. Yep. Three hits and a crit. Now, so Boba Fett's taken at least hit crit here. This is going to be a rough place for Boba Fett. He'll be lucky if he keeps him this round. He's got a reroll. Okay, he got so one evade. He's got a reroll. He's got the focus. He's got the force. Okay, so just hit crit. Just hit crit. Let's see. Let's see how bad the crit is. I mean, blinded would be horrible right now. Fuel leak. Okay, which is bad because he's got uh, whisper with fifth brother, and that can really twist that knife. Mm -hmm. So Dengar, if he manages to get some crits onto Vader. With his um, with his uh, auto blaster, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm. Boba Fett, uh, uh, Vader can't cancel them, so it's guaranteed damage. So here's the choice: Do you go in at Whisper or do you go in at um, at Vader? Uh, Both are 
Yeah, the minute untouched. Yep, well, he's grabbing the three dice. So it's going to be an auto blaster shot. Yep. I guess we'll find out when defense dice are rolled. Yep. Okay, so if he spends the lock, then we know, it's, know Vader. it's Vader. Yeah. Uh, he's going in at Vader. There's three green dice there. Is he? He might hold on to the uh, the target lock for that torpedo shot. Nope, nope. He's going to go ahead and spend no, it. it. Blank to blank. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And no crits either. So. But Vader's got no force. Vader is going to be taking a shield. Okay. So then I guess that means Boba Fett, you go in at Vader as well. Yeah, he's got to keep keep it going. There is a focus still by Vader. Okay. So here we've got Whisper going into Boba Fett. Does Whisper still have the target lock? I think she does. Uh, I don't see a target lock on the table. Or did she spend it? She may have spent it. Well, what was Whisper's action this turn? Uh, passive, maybe? Uh -oh. uh, did, uh, I think that's what they're checking now. Did, uh, did it move the token? All okay, right. so fifth brother there to uh, add the crit. It hit crit. So Boba Fett's definitely taking a crit. He's going to be taking two damage. Uh, no, just crit. No, because of the fuel leak. So Ooh. panic pilot plus one more. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I think they're calling that a, a missed trigger from uh, from Whisper there. But yeah, I think here Boba Fett has to go into Vader. He's got the potential of just removing Vader from the game. Two, three, four, five. Alright, Boba Fett's down to two. Well, that's four hits. Yep. She got fearless. So going into Vader. Vader's taking three hits right there. That's going to be half points. Yeah, yeah it's the right call. Uh, when you look at Whispers sat there with the two evade tokens, um, and Vader sat there with no force, it's, it's it's definitely the right call. So pretty brutal opening engagements for for both uh, both players. Um, still think that. Uh, Ollie's probably got slightly the upper hand with how bad a state uh, Boba Fett's in. Yeah, definitely. Being able to get that down to two holes so fast in this opening engagement. I mean, these guys, yeah. they really went for it. Um, but, you know, see, I know that some people, it's important to, to have some perspective, right? There are times mm -hmm. where you, you take this approach to Boba Fett and he takes no damage. There There's a timeline where Boba Fett is... Still completely untouched. Maybe took a couple shields from the initial range too, and is fine, right? You get those re rolls, two evades, two evades, two evades. Um, but at the same time, the the positioning here by Ollie, he was able to get shots consistently on Boba Fett, both Vader and Whisper being able to do some work. Uh, pretty yep. awesome, pretty awesome there. But at the same time, Timo is very aware of the game state. He knows he's he's behind, and with Dengar especially, you have some tools to overcome and take some big shots. We talked about the fact that if Dengar can uh, can get his arc and the correct range, he can have a target lock focus at any turn and pop off one of those proton torpedoes. With Vader now at only two hull, um, both the Grand Inquisitor and the, and Darth Vader could die from a single torpedo, and then you got Whisper versus the world. So you can't really count them out. Now, before we go too far back into the game, I want to remind everybody that we are only 15 subs away from giving away those Imperial rank badges. Use those uh, Amazon Prime uh, subs if you guys don't 
don't know what I'm talking about, if you have Amazon Prime, go ahead and use uh, go type exclamation point Prime. If you have Amazon, you can go ahead and get a free sub every 30 days. You can support awesome creators uh, across Twitch. And if you feel inclined to support us, we definitely appreciate it. Literally free money. Also, thank you to our sponsor, Curled Paw Creatives. Using coupon code SPACEJAM2020 saves you 20% off on the website right now. Uh, the coupon is good until Monday. Not on Tuesday. Don't ask on Tuesday. Now, the question here is, do we see a bomb drop from uh, Boba Fett? Uh, I think it's a really good place to do it. Yes, Dengar is close and he's stressed. But you know what? It's only a shield. I'd be inclined to drop that bomb and then just just uh, look at the uh, the one bank. Because yeah. I'm assuming Dengar did take the, uh, the handgunner focus last round and he's stressed. I'll go ahead and take a look. I didn't see the focus get dropped down. That's okay. earlier. I don't know whether that I, I don't know whether that's the, no, just on the the edge of the base there, or whether that's something slightly different. Um, no, there's no stress. Oh, okay. Yeah, what you're seeing is the the blue engine glow. This right here, Darren. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. That's all that is. Which, by the way, if you're a fan of TTS, starting at, for Space Jam LA, we have something else that we're going to be doing. Um, Luke Carrington from the Luke uh, from the Gold Squadron paint cast has been painting ships and then creating uh, TTS models of their paint jobs that will be uh, available for people to uh, to download. And then we're going to be giving away a real model that matches that on screen. Uh, going to have some fun with that at Space Jam LA soon. If you haven't checked out the paint cast, that's every Thursday. Um, go ahead, check them out. Should be pretty cool. So here, Boba Fett's got some options uh, still. Because he's got contraband cybernetics, uh, Ollie's really got to factor that in. Because um, the two talent roll here uh, would be quite an interesting interesting call. Um, and then either take the focus or clear the, uh, the damage sensor array. Uh, but again, if he's dropping that bomb, it's, it's going to be close. He should be clear, um, but... Uh, yeah, this is really this is, is going to be another interesting turn, especially to see where Whisper goes because Whisper's in a bit of a tight spot. She's not taking any damage yet, but her options of decloaking are really limited with only the uh, the decloak to the right available. Mm -hmm. um, and then a uh, you look at the uh, the Grand Inquisitor where he is at the moment with that rock there, unlikely to uh, ah. So it looks like uh, no decloak from Whisper. Staying safe. All right, here's the flip. So whisper. So this nope, is uh, Grand the Grand Inquisitor, Inquisitor first the doing the three hard. Yep. Yep. I'd probably just pick up a target lock here. It's probably not being threatened. You did see the proton bomb get dropped this turn. Looks like he's looking at the maneuverability options and getting himself uh, a, a little bit more space there by going to the outside. The Inquisitor definitely likes that space to have that one turn. Kind of like a delayed candy cane. All Are right. we going to see uh, Whisper Barrel Roll here? Yeah, Barrel Roll to the right might be the call in order to avoid the Proton Bomb. Or could just take the shield if he likes the positioning. This is where the uh, the two talent roll uh, from. Uh, he's just taking the evade. Yep. The uh, the two talent roll here from Boba Fett would be absolutely legendary. And, and takes the 4K and fits very nicely. Can we see how close that was? That's a, you 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 beat me to the punch. I was literally lining it up right now to show. Here we go. Give the people what they want. Ooh. Very nice. Good move there. Yeah, and then uh, Vader obviously hurtling forward is going to have to burn one of those after burner charges. Yep, with both um, those which, shields down, he don't want to stay by that proton bomb. Yeah, which makes me think actually, just a uh, a, a one bank from uh, from Dengar right now would, would be quite nice. 
You don't really care about the shield. You take the proton bomb. Mm -hmm. And get a couple and shots into Whisper. Stressed, if he's not stressed, you just do the hard one. Would line up the uh, the marksmanship quite nicely on uh, on Whisper right now for the uh, the auto blaster. All right, waiting for Dengar. Just I deciding on. Uh, I think Vader's just deciding on his actions. Mm -hmm. And I think hard one to the left is white on the jump master, right? So he would be able yep, to get a is. marksmanship auto blaster shot in the whisper. Yep. yep. I mean, because if you can get Try to this well. point where you you where you've maimed. Uh, three, all three of Ali's ships. Like that is a good spot, even though Boba Fett's down to only two hull. And there it is. And there's the hard one. Auto blaster, unblockable crit. So we know that Whisper is well, at that. least losing a yeah, shield. It, yeah. Well, it's not only that. It's uh, you've got the range one. You've got it in bullseye. You take the target lock. You take the handgunner focus. So that's going to be a four die auto blaster shot into it after Whisper's already lost a shield from that Proton Bomb. Yep, so shields down. One shield down yep. from the Proton Bomb. Lose. One for Dengar as yep. well. Which you don't care about. And then Dengar, range one, in bullseye, auto blaster shot. Um, and this is one of the things I loved when I was running auto blaster on, on Nom Lum. I had BT0, uh, BT1, yep. the, the droid that adds the, uh, the crit, basically. Similar kind of stuff, so fully modded as well so any crits here so there's one uncancelled hit crit you spend the focus yep um, and there was the marksmanship he just flipped the the focus to a crit yeah saves yeah, yeah, some time uh, whisper is taking two crits yep so ends up matching the dice anyway but uh yeah, yeah absolutely just crushed you get your half points there on whisper Right away, we'll find out what the crit is here in a second. And he's still got a shot coming in from Boba Fett, let's not forget. The crit is a disabled power regulator. So Whisper's going to be oh. ionized this turn. That is bad. You got enough. It is because Whisper is about to engage now and take that ion. Yep, and then after the ion, I think that Dengar might be able to fit that one forward in there and just pop him again. Uh, yeah, well, Dengar's got a couple of options. Um, so, if Whisper does the decloak to the right next turn, and then just does the one forwards, it, it, you've still got the decloak, so that's the uh, the thing that Dengar's got to watch out for. He can't overcommit, so just a little one forwards keeps him within range, and then he can just alternate his uh, his primary arc. Yes, it's only going to be a three die shot at range one, but even still, Whisper's only going to really have the two dice. All right, Boba Fett, three uh, hits going into Whisper. Five hits. dice from range three. And taking one. Take one. Yeah, because you spend the evade. So there is no decloak from Whisper now. So Whisper is just doing a one straight. He knows where Whisper's going to be. I think uh, this turn's going to be uh, well, no, pretty you, bad for you can You can uh, decloak. You can decloak. Oh, because yeah, you can decloak. Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah because sorry. he didn't. He, didn't, uh, he, he, didn't he never cloak. decloaked this turn. Oh, this is this is rough. With Vader disengaging, um, the Grand Inquisitor is going to have to try to do some work next turn. Maybe take out Boba Fett, trade Boba Fett for Whisper. Well, does does uh, does Dengar still have the target lock on um, on Whisper? Yeah, he does. So part of me just wants to take the four, pop the contraband and take the four K. That. That guarantees you a shot. Well, uh, unless... Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, even if you go wide. Because I guess the safest place now becomes... Where's Whisper going to go? If you decloak to the left, does that automatic... Does that put you on the cloud? No, you, you, you're safe from that. But the, the, the problem is, is Whisper's in a really, really tough spot. Like, you, you've still got some options. Um, I think Boba Fett just dials in a one bank here. Mm -hmm. um, because then you've got the options of going to the, the left or the right. The Grand Inquisitor's 
probably going to turn in. But then Ollie, we know, is a, a cautious player, so it may just uh, take like a, a three bank to come around that gas cloud, that crab claw. I don't. I don't um, think you have time. From the back. I don't think you have the time to to be cagey here. I think you got to be aggressive. Uh, I want to. Eighty minutes. No, I'm not saying time on the clock. I'm saying time in the actual game. If you just leave Whisper out to die without getting anything, I I think I think that's game over. You got to get Grand Inquisitor in there for a shot. Yeah. You, you have to. No, I get that. I, I mean, Ollie is the comeback kid. Um, <laughs> losing, losing Vader so quickly in uh, in Worlds. He does incredible things under pressure. So uh, I'm not writing him out, but he did great things with Whisper in the Grand Inquisitor. Right now, he looks like he's going to lose Whisper. Vader is very, very exposed. Um, and with being the, uh, the first player, um, Dengar can try and chase him and catch him. And remember, Whisper is uh, ion, ionized, so he's forced to do a one forward, but has the, the, yeah, the, the decloak the, options. The, the the crucial thing is, though, because he's ionized, he cannot get the evade from uh, his decloak. Correct, correct. So if, because when you're... If he decloaks, um, he's not going to be able to have the evade for, for next turn, so he's not. it puts him in a really difficult position if he decloaks. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Dion, you were gonna say? No, I was gonna say exactly what you said, so. You got me, fam. <laughs> you got me. I was a little slow on the draw because my dog jumped in my lap. Oh. Mine is asleep in the sun under the desk. <laughs> Normally she would she would be there, but like on the couch and she we have like this sun spot, but uh it's like super cloudy today, so no sun today. What kind of dog? Uh, half Dachshund, half Rat Terrier. Wow, that is uh, an interesting mix. <laughs> All right, what's the move? So a rat? No, she's not a rat. Stop! <laughs> stop, bull stop! Stop bullying my dog. Hey, there's no dog bullying here. Whoever that is, kick them. Uh, we've just gone to two screens. Hold on. That's just for you. Ah, okay. <laughs> Doggy. All right. All right. So what's the call here? No decloak. No decloak. Just the one straight. So... This is where the 4K would be beautiful. But I'd also be quite comfortable with just a, a hard one from Dengar. Here's the hard one from the Inquisitor. Doing what the yep. quiz do. Now, Boba Fett could be in a bit of a problem because he's not uh, cleared that uh, damage sensor array. So he's gonna not going to be able to boost in to uh, to close the distance. And the Inquisitor there taking the uh, the target lock. With the Inquisitor's ability, he can make it so it's range one. Or get the get the extra dice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Just waiting on action now. Again, the players have a lot of time, so they're, they're making sure to make these decisions. This is the last game. You've come so far, you want to make sure you're making good choices. And here is the uh, one bank to the left with Boba Fett. Boba might boost into the Inquisitor? He, ca he can't boost. Oh, because he's... Because he's lost the... Yeah. Oh, because of the... Um, the damage sensor The damage sensor, sensor ray. There you go. Uh, that that was the uh, the challenge there because the uh, Boba Fett should be he shouldn't be stressed though should he? Uh, no, not anymore. But give him a second. I'm sure. Um, oh no, he got the panic pilot. Yes, he. Oh yes. So he has triple stress right now. Oh yeah, because he was yeah he took the panic pilot. So there's the hard one there from Dengar. That is a proton um, torpedo at at Vader's face. Is what that is going to be? Uh, isn't he? Ah, he's popped contraband. Contraband, contraband, contraband. Yeah, absolutely. You uh, 
yeah, you pop contraband, you do that, you take the target lock. Do you take the hand solo? Probably not. I mean, you could. Gives you a couple of turns to uh, to offset the uh, the stress, be double stressed. It's not a terrible position for him to be in. Guar got the uh, the one foot. Probably Sorry? guarantees him dying. Is probably what, what yeah. you're leaning for. Yeah, I mean, Vader at this range is only going to have the three dice. Yeah, he's taking yeah. the hand solo stress there. And that is Did the Vader Han Solo shoot? gunner. I'm uh, assuming Vader opted not to shoot there. Yeah, Vader's like, no, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You, you open it up to the double tap. Although, slight misplay on Ollie's part, he's got nothing that can get him at that range. Because the arc's out the side. Oh, you're oh, right. No. Um, oh, no, actually, can you fire the torpedoes? He's got two torpedoes left here. So, yeah, you're yeah. taking two torpedoes. Yeah, because the, the Dengar ability, I don't think, says anything about primary. Yeah. Uh, a bonus attack. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bonus attack, not a bonus primary, so yeah. Uh, hit crit. So we see... Spends, uh, changes one of the hits to a crit because of the proton torpedo. Uh, has he got marksmanship, though? Is it in his bullseye to add another crit? Uh, after the target lock, possibly. And yeah, that's so going to be the another... Lock. There's another crit yeah. from the marksmanship and the so hit. Vader definitely taking a crit. Vader's yeah, dead. Vader's gone. So, Timo ahead now, 112 to 57. So, Whisper took the defensive position here. Possibly, um, I mean, it's definitely the safest spot. There was nowhere to, to get a shot there. But I'm sure Whisper is wishing, wishing she had a shot. Yeah, I mean, if, if Whisper hadn't have taken that eye on that turn... Uh, there was a huge amount of things that she could have done. All right, here's um, the Inquisitor. To, uh, okay. Spent the force so, in order to... Spent the force to make it range one. And... Has the lock, so spending it for the uh, blank. And spend the focus. Hit crit. So Boba Fett taking a crit at least. Takes hit crit. So a dead Boba Fett. Uh, no, 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 he has the force. He has the force, so just a crit. Unless it's a double. No, he takes... Uh, it takes hit crit, does he not? No, because he used the force on the oh. on the focus. So he's down to one. That was a wounded pilot. After you perform an action, uh, roll a die on a hit or a crit, take a stress. Boba Fett back at the Grand Inquisitor. Just the one. And safe there. So I'm not saying I'm enjoying this game because I bet all my money on uh, Timo, but um, I'm not not saying that. Yep. <laughs> so a couple of couple of <laughs> questions that need to be answered in the chat because I see them. Uh, Vader did not. Sh so Vader. Uh, let me stop back. Ali had first player. So Vader's opportunity to shoot came first. He elected not to shoot in order to avoid the double tap from Dengar. Okay, because Dengar would have been able to shoot the torpedo twice. So hoping to only get shot once and have the chance to avoid taking damage that shot or, you know, maybe only taking enough to uh, to live. Uh, that's why Ali elected not to shoot, which then, of course, means that there was no simultaneous fire for Vader. And again, like, I know hindsight's like, well, well, Vader died. He didn't get to shoot. He probably should have shot. Well, you know, Vader, that's, that's the dice that Ali rolled there. Like, if Vader lives there, that changes the game because Vader next turn would probably be able to land a hit-hit crit onto, uh, onto Dengar and get you rolling there. But, uh, you know, it, it was a calculated yeah, risk yeah, you, for sure. When you, when you look at the odds there... Dengar being at range three and having L337 and Vader not having the target lock on uh, Dengar um, it meant that you, you're you throwing two dice against three dice. You don't really, like, even if he got two crits, he could spend L337 to make you re-roll them. And then, again, you get another two crits. Dengar blanks out. Guess what? He's only taken shields. Like, it, it's, it's not doing enough damage to Dengar to make it worth that double tap. Um, I think if you work out the odds, you're probably better off um, 
or expectant to, to hope that you, uh, Dengar gets poor red dice um, and uh, and you survive. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I, I, I can't work out the, the, the odds of it right now, but yeah. Dengar fluffing one roll is more likely than, uh, than uh, you doing any significant damage to him at that range. That's right. We have 415 people walking, uh, walking, ha, watching from around the world. Thank you guys for tuning in to this premier level online X Wing. Uh, thank you guys so much. And there's going to be more. We got Space Jam, LA, and Sydney coming up in the next few weeks. So make sure you guys tune in then. Here we go. Whisper with the candy cane. Yeah, so Ollie having to get a uh, whisper back in this fight. Uh, yeah. uh. We'll probably end up having a shot through the cloud. Uh, Boba Fett, man, still super stressed. And even, even when he becomes unstressed... There's going to be risk of stress because of the wounded pilot crit that he has. Yeah. Now it is important to note that if uh, if uh, Ollie does kill Boba Fett here, he uh, he will be ahead by one point. Very, so very although true. it looks bad, um, Dengar's not the easiest and most maneuverable ship to uh, to be able to uh, move around. So. Uh, Looks like it's certainly be interesting. Looks like Ali uh, has opted to basically arc dodge Boba Fett and start putting some damage into Dengar. Yep. Yep. Dengar flew three straight. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. So Dengar's gone three straight just to uh, to shed one of his stress, give him some distance. Uh, Grand Inquisitor here can make it range one, but uh, Dengar's still got his arc facing that way, so. Just the one crit onto the Grand Inquisitor. I don't think it's going to give him much of a problem. Uh, there's... Uh, there's an evade anyway, so it's clear. Uh, Grand Inquisitor spending a uh, force charge to make it so that it's range one. Yep, three dice coming in. Has a focus. Yep. Hit, hit, crit. So there we saw a re-roll there with L337. Really <laughs> unfortunate on uh, Dengar's part that uh, he got the exact same result. So And hit crit, which means a couple shields yep. down, and shields are completely yep. gone. Now, what this does mean is that the second part of L3's ability now does trigger. Um, so because he's shieldless and the cards flipped, it means that the uh, the banks to the right are now blue. Uh, probably not going to matter too much because of where that gas cloud is, but it's just one of those things to uh, be aware of. Now, does Whisper have a shot into Dengar? Nope, looks like they're back to dials. So there will be no decloak from Whisper here. Because um, she didn't get the shot, so she doesn't have any uh, any tokens. Um, so it's going to be difficult for her to get back into the fight. One thing to watch out for here uh, there's is a, the, There's uh, a cloak token on her right now. Really? Uh, okay. There is. Did we miss something? Uh, Whisper, uh, took the cloak, the... Whisper took the cloak action. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So this is where the Grand Inquisitor shows how good of a knife fighter that he actually is. Because we've got the uh, the blue one bank here, Dengar's really going to struggle to uh, to try and put some damage into him. Because shooting out the side, he's only got the uh, the two-die gun. Boba Fett, if he wants, can do the hard one in. But again, he's going to keep with his stress. Now, it's not too much of a problem because he's still got that damage sensor array. But Boba Fett really does need to start um, throwing some dice downfield at the, uh, the Inquisitor or at Whisper. Because Dengar's exposed now. Dengar doesn't have any shields left. And he's only got two agility. He's got very little in the way of uh, defensive modifiers. So this is where it becomes quite difficult for the, the jump master to make itself relevant again. I'm not sure what exactly is going on with the uh, the Phantom there. Uh, doing a few dancing uh, around maneuvers. But uh, ah, I think they... Uh, 
they skipped Timo wanting to uh, drop the bomb. Yep. There we go. I think we're good. Uh, but they're going to move on, it looks like. Calling it a missed opportunity. And moving. Here we go. The Grand Inquisitor hunting Dengar. Okay, so I think Boba Fett here now just uh, gets rid of his uh, panicked pilot. Uh, not panicked pilot, the uh, dummy sensor array. Yep, there we go. He's got the force, he's got the range. The Whisper might be able to get him, but... Ah, uh, wounded pilot though, takes stress. Which again, isn't too much of a problem because he's got the... Um, He's got the blue one bank open to him. Very true. Gonna be trading one bank from Dengar. Gonna be trading some range one shots there. Dengar does have his arc set to the left. Yeah, so here you take the target lock, you take the handgunner, uh, stress at the start of your engage, and you roll the three dice. It's gonna be difficult to get some damage through onto the Inquisitor, and he's probably gonna get punished for it because the Inquisitor there are at range one as well. Mm, uh, he's he's, he's debating. He was debating going at Whisper. I don't know if you guys saw that. He's still going backwards and forwards. Because he could initiative kill Whisper. That's the that's the thing there. Uh -huh. But it's a two dice gun versus four. It'll be four dice because through the rock. The evade. Yeah, it's. I think the Inquisitor is the one that you're going to get more damage on, and it gets you the half points. That's true. Assuming you get him through, and I wonder if you think Ali will. Ali will probably use the ability to to take away the range one yeah. bonus. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what that's doing is it's forcing the Inquisitor to spend his uh, force. So it's two on three with a focus or two on four with a force and an evade. You have your best chance of, of hitting the Inquisitor. Barely, yeah. but it's true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, only two red dice there, so... Uh, hit crit. No, so this is against Whisper. Like whisper. Going at Whisper. Oh, jeez. Force to spend some of the tokens. Yeah, you probably spend the Force. Really is an interesting call there by, uh, by Timo. Oh, Whisper will have a shot as well. If he hits Dengar, gets the evade back. Yeah, no, I get that. I suppose the, the debate was around whether it was only ever going to be two dice anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's it's where did he go with it, so. Two hits. This is the Inquisitor going into Dengar. Takes the damage. Age, so. And now here's the passive senses trigger. Question, did Dengar take the stress from Handgunner or did he just go without that? Uh, we can check on that in a sec. Whisper taking the target lock on the Boba Fett, seeing if he can finish him off. I don't think he did the Han Gunner possibly. Uh, one of each has a target lock. And spends the force for hit, crit, crit. Again, that's the fifth brother trigger. Boba Fett has yeah, four sorry. dice, no re-rolls, no mods of any kind. Could be the end of Boba uh, right does here. Does he not have the force? Oh, sorry, he does have the force. You're right. One force. So he so he needs two evades and an eyeball at least. Come on, Teemo. Do it for Team Beard. And he got it. Yeah, there we Ooh. go. 
the power of the beard. <laughs> so Boba Fett firing back. And that's hit crit going at Whisper. Yep. So, and this is Whisper without uh, an evade or any tokens whatsoever. It takes hit crit. Ooh. Whisper's gone. Whisper is gone. Deleted off the table. This no, is the Grand Inquisitor versus the world. Yeah, this completely the changes the game. This completely yeah, yeah. changes the, the game. Asking... Go, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> The reason I was asking about that target lock is he's got a target lock on the Grand Inquisitor and he's not stressed. He can quite easily just do a K-turn or a sloop right now and uh, just really put the hurt into the Grand Inquisitor. Ooh, man. Uh, that was statistically unlikely, but showed what variants can do. You know what? You got to put yourself in the right place at the right time and take risks when you can. And here's, you know, some people were looking at Dengar saying, why would you shoot Whisper here? You, the, it's statistically easier to hit the Grand Inquisitor. Well, there was the opportunity. You got rid of one of the tokens and you had a chance and Whisper is gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, forcing Whisper to spend a token on the... Uh, the shot from uh, Dengar to then have the shot on uh, Whisper with Boba Fett. It's just time on target um, throwing uh, throwing two ships versus one um, not splitting your firepower. Makes sense. I'll be honest, I, I thought it was a bit of an odd one going for uh, for Whisper there, but um, yeah, Timo's doing what Timo does. <laughs> I see the scum fans uh, redeeming that that scum animation on the on the screen. Seem excited. <laughs> now here's the question: Will Timo make it so that we are so that the beard team beard is two and zero, oh? or will Ali come back with the upset? Because here's the thing. The Inquisitor has one shield left. Hasn't given up half yet. Boba Fett, you're, you, he's one attack away from leaving the board. You still got 57 minutes left. You got Dengar versus the Grand Inquisitor. Now, the Inquisitor platform itself, with uh, think about just the base initiative three, is considered extremely defensive because of the uh, the Force plus evade possibility. With 57 minutes, I could see, especially that the shields are down on, on Dengar, like the Grand Inquisitor has a chance. If you half Dengar, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Ali would be ahead. It, assuming that you don't lose that last shield on the Grand Inquisitor. So there's still is time. With, uh, is this with, do you mean by killing, uh, killing Boba Fett and halving Dengar? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it puts him just so slightly ahead. Uh, yeah, by a, I think it's by about nine points, something like that. Now, the thing that he's got to watch out for here is the Inquisitor's stressed. So he's got very few options open to him. The hard one might just about fit. But you've then got Dengar, who can... Uh, he's got the two sloop open to him. He's got the, uh, the 4K open to him. So you've potentially got there um, two shots coming into the Grand Inquisitor... Uh, from Dengar. So, yes, um, Dengar could take some damage, but he can he can put out some damage as well. Boba Fett um, could, in theory, as well, to kind of stick around uh, longer than he... Well, he's already stuck around longer than he should have, let's be honest. There's a hard <laughs> one. So he's going to clear the stress. Probably just see an evade. He's got to be defensive with that Inquisitor now. Yep, he has both force available. He's going for the, uh, the barrel roll. Barrel roll focus. I guess it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna link it. So there's the hard one from Boba Fett. So Boba Fett's still stressed. So. Yeah, not caring, but has has a force to have some type of offensive modification. He was pretty sure yeah. that the Grand Inquisitor wasn't gonna be able to shoot him this turn. So taking the risk, he knows that he will be unstressed next turn with something as simple as a one forward. We got the sloop here from Dengar. Does Is that it... leave him out of arc? 
I think he's out of arc. It did, did not hit. We'll go ahead to the table cam here real quick so you guys can see no arc there. Oh, that's that's really good play by Ollie there, doing that hard one and the uh, the barrel roll. I can't help but think if uh, if Timo would have done the uh, the 4K there, would have put him in a great position because he'd have had the uh, the torpedo shot. Mm -hmm. All right. So the Grand Inquisitor here is going to get a shot into the. Uh, so is this Grand Inquisitor first? Yep. Grand Inquisitor yep. two hits going into Dengar. Spent one force. That force. Only two agility. And takes one. That is now half points on Dengar, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, he already had half points. Maybe? I don't know. My brain. Dengar had one hit. Oh! Ooh! 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 So here's the problem. Dengar's now stressed. He can't turn around. The Inquisitor makes sense for him to uh, to turn in towards Boba Fett and just hope that um, he can survive Boba Fett's shots. I, I suppose if you uh, do the hard one, take an evade action. Boba Fett's not going to be able to get out of uh, out of your arc. Maybe with a one bank and a one bank boost, but it it, it would be tight. So maybe uh, just a one bank from uh, the Grand Inquisitor. It's it, Ollie's not out of this game. No, not by at all. Any stretch of the imagination. For a reference, for people at home, both contraband cybernetics are burned on both the pilots. So, uh, Nick, if we could please get those crossed out on the overlay, because we do have a lot of time, and I'm sure that question is going to get brought up again. So just uh, just to have that out there. Thank you so much, buddy. All right, man. This is this is a close game. This is a really close game. This man, this type of <laughs> these moments are why we play X Wing. It's tight. We still we got two great players. You see awesome plays from both. You got the risk. You got the excitement of the dice. Everything you want a final right here. Space Jam Rome. Who's going home yeah, with the no, belt? Nobody wants to see it one-sided. It's always much more pleasurable when it's nice and tight. So, right now, everybody in the chat, let me know. Since we have 400 and f almost 450 people watching right now, where are you watching from? Actually, you know what? I should put a poll up on the screen. Maybe ask what continent are you watching on? <laughs> is that is that the right question? What do you think, Darren? Um, I bet we don't get anyone from Antarctica. I mean, I just won't put that one on there because people would just meme it. There we go. We'll go. And is it that Ollie just likes playing on hard mode? <laughs> Maybe. Because the, the the path to victory here for Ollie is, uh, it's quite like he, he this turn could take out uh, Boba Fett. Hopefully, hold on to the half points from uh, Grand Inquisitor. Um, but even if even if uh, Grand Inquisitor goes down, to say one hole, ooh, he's doing the hard one that way, and then the barrel. Roll. It's an interesting move because obviously, if uh, Dengar now bumps, Grand Inquisitor's not got a shot. That's right, Kencho. I am the best dressed man in X-Wing. <laughs> Your wife is right. All right, so the Grand Inquisitor did that one right turn. Boba Fett went three straight. Yeah, I, I think Timo might have been going for the bump there. Tactical bump. Does he have the arc still? I think he might. Yeah, and that's, that's the problem there. Because because the Grand Inquisitor's gone that way, I still got the... Uh, the yep, so... <laughs> Because he's still got that wounded pilot. He's That's still stress. taking that stress, but he doesn't care. Dengar does bump, so avoiding the shot there. 
But Dengar, uh, sorry, Boba Fett is going to have a reroll because it's range one. Does he have arc, though? I believe he does. There it is. Yeah. So he's not going to get fearless, but he is going to have four dice uh, with the uh, with the reroll and with Maul. And he's got target lock, so... I think that uh, uh, he's denying the shot with the uh, Grand Inquisitor, so it's only going to be three dice. Oh, ho, ho, that oh, feels blanks. bad. Single reroll. Oh, man, three blanks. No, no, no. He's, he's got a target lock. I oh, know. He doesn't. No. Oh. Oh, wait, did he Molly's forget? There are two, there's two target locks on the Inquisitor yeah. right now. There yeah, are two. Yeah, that's what I thought. Team, Timo took the target lock to... Uh, to use against the uh, he, he could have re-rolled all three there you know what he might be holding uh, it out for later because he is stressed right now might be waiting ollie got away with that he just someone called the police somebody's just been robbed in broad daylight <laughs> like uh, i honestly i love ollie i think that move was a misplay with where he positioned himself. But hey, guess what? He just got away with it, so who cares? All right, so the Inquisitor just trying to find some space right now, it seems. Yeah, just trying to get out of there. Um, clear some distance. Yeah, he doesn't He doesn't want to stress Fett... himself to get turned around yet. Yeah. The thing is, if Boba Fett's done another three forwards, he can just boost right behind him. Nope, he's just bumped. So Inquisitor should be fairly safe this round. Just depends what Dengar's done. But again, Ollie switching it up there with his moves, trying not to be too predictable because we've seen a few turns in a row where he's done the hard one, the barrel roll, and things like that. Yep. Is that just missed the rock as well? Just misses the rock, gets the focus. We'll have a side arc shot here. It's the only shot this turn. Here we go. And it's clear, and it's double modded. Does he spend the lock? Yeah, he you spend the lock. He does. And has the focus. Yeah, spend the lock. Two hits. Ooh. Oh. Oh, no. Grand Inquisitor set. What? What? Or was that just the dice set in there? Did he roll? Yeah, I think, someone, I think someone just hit flip. But yeah, Grand Inquisitor down to... Uh, and then we've got hit crit Down to one Boba hole. Spend, spends the lock. This could just be it. Hit crit. So four dice. Spend both force. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, yeah. Man. The reason you spend the uh, the lock there with Dengar is because next turn he can still get that double modded shot because he does a one bank. Grand Inquisitor's got very little space to run in now. He can take the target lock, and then you just hand gunner to get the uh, the focus again. And you, because you're doing slow blue maneuvers, you're constantly clearing that stress, constantly getting your double modded shots. Now, it's only a two dice gun out the side, but he set us that chipping away, chipping away. And as we saw, sometimes you get triple blanks. Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, man. The question is, how long can Ollie hold on to this one hole? Honestly, in this position, uh, I think this is the last round. All right. I, I think if you... if if I'm Dengar in this position, I'm just going to do a hard one. There's there's no way that the Grand Inquisitor can get out of that that viewpoint. Uh, you've got the target lock on him. You can then barrel roll either way and still take the handgun of stress and have a double modded uh, proton torpedo shot. He he can't escape it if you manage to get all three hits. Yep. And let's talk about the Ali going into the corner. Like I know, like as. You know, high-level action players know it's like the, the 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 corner can be really dangerous. So sometimes you don't go in there in order, you know, because it's bad. You can get cornered. It's hard to escape. But there's times where you take the risk to go in the corner because you're like, well, going in the corner can be quote unquote considered a bad move. But sometimes you you take the risk, and if your opponent doesn't account for the corner because you think, why would I go in the corner? It could end up being the safest place. So, you know, being caught in the corner by two ships, a little rough here, and um, that's why he's left with only one hole. Yeah, I mean, some ships don't mind being in the corner. You see, like, um, 
there's the the star viper formation where you can kind of dance around in a corner um th those ships don't mind being in it but other ships like there's a phrase from first edition where uh, the corners where dash dies like you never put dash in a corner um, but I think one important thing to note is right now is I am disgusted by Europe that we are 11 subscribers away from that last giveaway because I don't want it to go into anyone in America. This is our best chance of keeping it here in Europe. <laughs> so uh, if you subscribe and get us to 150, then Dion's going to give away those rank slides, which are absolutely number one, the thing that I want to get. There you go. So <laughs> Darren wants somebody in Europe to get them so that he can give it to, to him. Well, not only that, it, it denies an American of having them, which I'm, I'm all about. <laughs> all right, so the Grand Inquisitor did the talent the roll. roll. The Toronto roll. Getting to face off against Boba Fett. One hall versus one hall. The, the Inquisitor also gets the coverage from the, uh, from the cloud from Dengar. Here's the... Wounded pilot roll, no stress. Boba Fett will have the re-roll on defense. There's, and there's Dengar. The yeah, Seeks you just the take target a look. lock. Yeah, that was a, a, a hard take two. The hand gunner. It was a hard two, okay. You take the lock, you take the handgunner, uh, you roll the four dice, and uh, strip away that uh, that force. Gilded Edge, thank you for the gifting subs. Gifted five, we're close. Let's do this attack. And boom goes the dynamite. Ford, right, there are, we need we, we need five more subs. Come on. The force and the uh, the cloud. Gas cloud. Gets it, isn't it enough. Takes a crit, dies. Was it four? Yeah, it was. It was uh, three hits and a crit. Oh, congratulations. Timo is our Space Jam champion.